No? Give you, give you a minute? Cool. Okay. So uh, after uh, Pablo present uh, connection tracking and how to do it uh, how, and how to harder offload it, I think we also want to, I also want to talk about connection tracking. Uh, I want to talk what, it, to speak what, a little bit. What is connection tracking? What is done today with OVS? What is currently implemented through TC that's required? And what the motivation? And a suggestion how to use TC to contract, uh, to control CT. Um, okay. So I, I will start talking about what is connection tracking and and connection tracking, there are two things that is done. For first is the a database that's for every new connection, we have uh, a state that is a new connection and we put it inside the database. That is done for every, it's usually done for the SYN packets, that's cre creating a connection. And that's what Pablo say, uh, had the, the NDO to, to get into the hardware. The, the second thing that connection, this connection tracking is doing so for every packet, is doing the validation of the packet. For TCP, the validation is ju not just a per packet validation, it's validate that the stream is valid, and it means that for every packet, he a check that the, the packet is there in the TCP, it's, it's valid, it's mean in the TCP window. In order to do that, we need to track on all the packets that belong from both sides, it's a connection, from both sides that's related to this connection. So this is something that's, as uh, Pablo looking his, in the hardware that he's using, it's currently not implemented in hardwares. And this is something that we want to take into the coming hardware. So that's the reason we want to, to build the infrastructure to do that. Um, so that's the two things that connection tracking, the, the kernel module of connection tracking that's contract is doing today. Um, what actually is, uh, the, the packet is going out from the connection tracking with a state. The state can be a new for new connections, established for a, va a valid connection, related because it's related to another connection that's like an FTP connection or those kind of, and invalid. Invalid, that means that the packet is not part of a connection, it's probably because uh, it's, val it's not, uh, it couldn't validate the packet inside the TCP window. It's at the end, probably the packet will be dropped. So this is the idea of uh, connection tracking that's implemented today in the contract. It's, and it's currently be, uh, used by uh, IP table. And another customer that's using the same code is the OVS. So OVS is using it in using the same code of contract. So nobody thought about duplicating the code, of course. Um, and there is two things that uh, OVS is doing. There is two, two rules. That's one of them is an action go to the connection tracking. So you can stay, set a rule from open vSwitch, go to connection tracking. So it means that this packet will be tracked by the connection tracking. And after this packet is coming back from the connection tracking, we can add rules to classify according to the state that we got from the connection tracking. If it's a new, established, related, or invalid. So this is how today OVS is using connection tracking. And those look like the rules on the data path of the connection tracking, as you can see, there is a rule with um, city state if it's non-track, minus a track. So the action will be in the second line. Let's use the pointer. As you can see here, the action will be go to connection tracking and recirculate. It means go to, when you come back from the connection tracking, go to table number nine. Um, this is, and when you come back to rule number nine, for table number nine, if the packet was tracked and established, 
then the action will be, okay, go out on the external port that is supposed to be. On the other direction, the rule also will be if, it's, if the port is different port, if it's not trackable, go to table number, hey, sorry. Yeah. The last one, yeah. So if it's uh, not uh, trackable, go to table A. And in table A, if it's establish and track, go to, action, go to port number five. So this is how OVS is implementing today the connection tracking. It's using, of course, the contract in the kernel, the same one that's uh, in the IP table. OK, so I, I try to look what we currently have in TC, because I, I want to use TC in order to do the offload, to, 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 to let TC support contract. So currently today, there is a, com, uh, a TC action called conmark. That's, I thought, oh, well, I have it, so I don't do anything. But what conmark is doing is just marking a packet in order that the connection, the connection tracking can use this mark. So this is not something that is useful for us, not for, for what we need. Um, and I think another thing that Jiri now implemented in the TC is a support of a multi-table, multi-chain. Uh, it's resembled the recirculate ID that um, Open Vistwitch have. So you can point from another table, from one table to another table. That's you can do the action, go to the connection tracking, and then when you come from the connection tracking, you need to have another table. So this is the, um, the syntax of TC to support. As you can see, there is an action, go to table, go to chain, sorry. And also, when you add a rule, you can specify which the chain. So it means which table that rule will be in. Of course, by default, the, the chain is zero, so it's backward compatible. So this is already the support today. So what is the motivation? So the motivation that's uh, now, uh, of course, TC now is the one that don't support connection tracking. So, because OVS support it, IP tools support it, uh, IP, uh, IP table support it. So, why TC not, should support it too? So, but this is, you know, just a, a nice way to, 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 to ask for it, but I think our next motivation will be to enable open vSwitch hardware offload, because today, if you want to offload OVS to hardware, we're using TC to do that. So today, uh, OVS is not, uh, sorry, TC is not supporting any connection tracking. So the way that we want to, to continue this uh, effort is to let, connection, uh, to let TC support connection tracking. So again, we, my suggestion will be the same use as uh, Open vSwitch is doing it. So we will have an action in TC, okay, go to connection tracking. And then we can classify, when, the, when we get the packet back from the connection tracking, we can classify according to the connection tracking state. So the idea, again, is not to use, is to use the same code of the net filter and just have an action go to connection tracking. And when the packet is back from the connection tracking, we can classify about the state, the city state. So again, to reuse the code, connection tracking is, is a lot of code. It's not something uh, that we want to duplicate. Um, so to be more specific, uh, the new action we call CT for connection tracking. Um, of course, if you have a better names, if you prefer a longer one, I don't, don't think so. But um, that will send the packet to the NFS connection tracking. Um, of course, the parameters that we'll have, it's a commit. It means that this action is going to happen. It means that it will take it inside to the database. 
and a zone. So if you want to have uh, multiple zones in the connection tracking, so it's the command also needs to support that. So as I mentioned, so the TC command will send the packet to connection tracking. After the packet is coming back from the connection tracking, of course it will be used the, um, the chain. That's the reason we can classify, we have another TC on, another, on a different chain that's classified according to the connection information. So, um, so the, connections, the, um, the connection city state uh, will classify, so we want to classify according to the flags. So the flags are going to be track and validate. So the idea, it's like I took this idea, of course, from OpenVSwitch. When you do something good, it's better to copy. Um, so we can use a plus if you want this uh, flag to be set, minus if it must be clear, or if we're not coming in, so we ignore this. Uh, we can ignore this flag. So the flags, the flags can be if the packet tracked, if it had been, uh, uh, was been uh, uh, through a connection tracker, invalid. If the connection tracking is think that the packet is invalid, as I mentioned, this is probably because a TCP window or other things. A new, if it's a new connection, uh, establish if it's an established connection. A reply will be uh, will be set if the if it's a reply, and related, of course, if it's uh, something that's related to another the rule that's already built, if it's ICMP or FTP connection that is related to. So, again, this is. Exactly the same as what Open is doing, doing today. So, just an example how the TC command would look like. We'll use action to go to connection tracking, and of course, go to chain number one. So, so it's approximately the same as we look at the rules of uh, Open Vswitch. So, any question regarding that? Go ahead. Mike. No, the mic's there. It's work. You need just to re-in it. Disable and edit it. They've already been planning to do this, um, but uh, I'd also suggest um, being able to set and match on the mark and the label. Okay. And then um, also um, something that we've used in OVS is um, being able to specify the helper. So if you're using like FTP or TFTP um, for um, when you tell it to go to the contractor so it knows which helper function if you, so that you can get the related flags mm -hmm. or okay. related. Uh, so the uh, the connection tracking state also has mark and label associated with it, and then being able to set those and then match them later on is, is helpful. O OVS does that, and it, if you're trying to do that for hardware offload, it would probably be helpful to have that as well. That was all. I had. Uh, okay, um, <clears throat> why couldn't you use Conmark again? Because it's it it has access to the uh, contract state. Right. Right. It uh, so you could. It just doesn't look at the state, it looks at the mark instead. Mm -hmm. So you could easily extend it to, to do uh, state um, either checking or, or, mark, uh, or validation. Yeah, but to use the same uh, syntax, con mark, I think it, was, it will be misleading. Uh, if, if, yeah, the, if, okay. the, if the name was, again, something connection tracking, okay, that's okay. all, sure, we use it. But I think fair it enough. will be that's, misleading. That's, that's a fair statement, yes. Okay, but uh, as I said, the name, right? It, but y it has the code would be very useful. Yes, of course. Okay.
Yes, I just wanted to say that after once once you get the, the connection tracking support for TC, I think that it would mean just a matter to of adding a new action to to flow offload, so that you could reuse all the infrastructure that I'm that I'm going to do yep. for the hardware offload. So it, I I see that this is going to be kind of kind of complementary to to the board about what I'm doing. Sure. So I yep. think both both things mix well. Right. And th this is the first st stage, I think, and as we spoke in your uh, lecture, I think we want to, to extend that because customers are asking for the full globe, not just to, connect, to, 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 to classify a new connection, also to validate that uh, the packets are in the TCP window. So, so that's the reason I ask what, when you do a, a new connection, you tell the hardware, the NDO of a new connection, do I get all the information? That's so I think we need to have all the information in order to create it, to try to offload it. So we need the TCP window and, and all the current information. And after we do that, we need to also do, uh, to, to pull or to get event of connections that are not valid in order that the user space will, will understand what is the current status for each connection. And I think th there we are finding some small things that we need to figure out what is done for, because they are, fin uh, if the fin, if we want to take the fin. Because what we understand, of course, that the SYN packet will be going through the software. We don't want to hardware offload the, the, the SYN packets. So what we're doing with the fin, because there are corner case of the fin that if you get a SYN attack in the middle, you need to do something in the fin. There are a few cases that make, make it complicated to hardware offload it. And we want to make it compatible. So we don't want to tell the customer, OK, we are doing connection tracking, but we're not supporting this, 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 this. So the customer will say, OK. So you're not supporting. We want, because currently, uh, like open vis uh, OpenStack a customer using a security group, they don't know exactly what it means. Currently, the implementation is using connection tracking. So if we want to offload it, we want to give the same security level. We don't want. So sorry, what, what is your strategy for not offloading the SIN? So we, we prefer not to offload the SIN. I understand that, but do you mean you would match on the TCP flag in the hardware flow? Y yes, but I don't think that's, that's the way to do it. The way to do it is to match on the current connections, of the established connections. And if it's not established, it means go to software. Go to software, the connection, so the SYN packet probably go to the software because of that. We don't need to have a match on the SYN packets. So it's understood. I understand, thank you. Uh, so so one, of the, one of the questions I have actually in, uh, in general is like, so it's quite useful to be able to, for instance, look at what the, contra uh, the contract state is right now. You know, you've got like the contract command line tool. Mm -hmm. So that'll be uh, presumably at the moment, it's, you know, it just probes into the, the, the version of the state that exists inside the kernel. So the question is like, how, what, what's the synchronization between what exists in the, in the kernel state and what exists in hardware tables? Um, and particularly when you're like querying this, yeah, so th that's the reason I want, I, I think that's uh, also the timeout and everything we want to implement, I think it will be easy to implement in the software, we don't need to take it to the hardware. So in my idea, I see that we will uh, we'll do some polling on the hardware and get all the connection, all the running connection that's and, and the counters of each of them and update the software connection tracking. So also that you will get number of packets that was, what's the current window, uh, what is the last time that was the packet was seen on this connection? And then we can also manage the timeouts from the software. So th this is similar to what, uh, uh, what we're doing, for instance, in, uh, when we offload in the hardware VXLAN. So, we, so actually, we offload the neighbor from the operating system. They don't see the activity of the neighbor. But the operating system al already has the knob for us to update the used value of the neighbor. So they would not put it into stale. So here we think something. We need something uh, uh, similar. We need the connection tracking subsystem to allow us to to, to upload uh, a used value into them or, or, or packet and bytes. Okay. That would be an internal change. It's not. Uh, so 
Yes, but th this is not a synchronization. That's a feedback, okay? Synchronization goes beyond that. Feedback means that you're using something which is offloaded from the kernel, so they would know that it's been used, right? Because no, otherwise I they would age this out. Right, no, no, I get that part. The question is, uh, is there, so it'll be more than, potentially more than just a SYN packet, right? Like if you get a whole bunch of flows, there's a risk that you've gotten the SYN, the state has progressed, you've actually established, but you still haven't updated the software state or you haven't updated the hardware state, right, one way or the other. There, doesn't that risk exist? Like, So, no, because what I mentioned before, that we went only after the scene. When, when we, we move only to establish connection, then we want to forward it to the, the world to the hardware. So, you We're don't see, so when you move it to the, so, to the hardware, you're already in established connection. Established state. Oh, I see. Because you're, oh, I see. Because you're saying you may take a couple of packets into software post. Yeah. Yeah, and that's okay. So it'll be it'll become faster later, basically. Yeah. Okay, got it. And and we try. I think about calling the hardware every one second. So when you said when a human being is looking on those, so yeah. one second update, I think it's good enough. So I got a much basic question than that. Or. Ronnie, so, I mean, something being established doesn't equate, it could be a very short-lived flaw, correct? Right. So what, what is your decision point? You just, every time it gets established, you want to offload? Or? So the problem that's, most of the time, you need a few packets in order to understand which protocol it is, and if it's a short-lived or long-lived, if it's a YouTube connection that's you're going to download a, a full movie, or it's a, a short-lived of a GIF file that is single file that you just less the name to you. So the problem that you need to parse the, fr the, the, the first packet to do that. And if you start to parsing the, pa the packets, the TCP connection is going to be, um, the speed of the connection the, the will, will be higher. And then you will probably, when you try to offload it, you will have a, a misordering problem because some of them are in the software and you will start to do the forwarding by the hardware, you have a TCP reordering. So, a misorder, sorry. So, uh, it's, it's a problem that we try to, to avoid. So, could be that we prefer to do the connection tracking from the beginning for all the sessions, and, but of course, we can think about it in the future to find a new scheme, because currently today, connection tracking is not aware of the, if it's a long-lived or short-lived connection. So we can decide, of course, that's only after five packets we will call the, the hardware to do a hardware offload. It's, this is very easy to do, but this will cause problems. So, so, so one of the questions, actually, to, to, to follow on that, is that um, so the way that you're deciding to push things into the hardware at the moment is based on these TC flower rules. Right. And uh, there's some benefit for these TC flower rules to mask out bits that maybe don't matter for, like if you handle several different actual flows uh, with, with the same rule, then you could ideally just hardware offload them with one giant rule. But when it comes to the actual individual connections, um, how do you handle, for instance, the um, hardware tables for the connection tracking entries? It's, it's kind of Yeah, so the, the, the hardware offload decision will be from the connection tracking. It's from the TC point of view, you mean that you're going to take down the action, go to, to connection tracking, that's the TC rule, and the action, what to do with the state of the connection after you get the packet. The connection tracking itself, it's a kind of a block that TC is using. So there will be a, a connection tracking offload. So. From TC. So, so, like, in the way that this works, in, in like, for instance, uh, OVS today, um, we're just yes. using whatever the contract uh, table limits are. So that's like what, a million uh, connections or whatever it is that you configure through the syscaddle. Yep. So does that mean that you're also saying, well, I'm going to support uh, putting a million contract entries into my hardware tables because you have a CT? So yes. So you don't need to. So, can you repeat? I'm not sure I understand the question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it just keeps on dying halfway yeah. through. That's all. 
so, so like. So you can offload the uh, like the TC flower rule, which matches on, for instance, anything um, to this IP, or it could be even more generic than that. Yeah. And then your action is do contract, and perhaps for this particular rule, you always want to create a connection. So your 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 rule would look like uh, your action is CT create an entry. Um, now, if you look at this like running in software, this CT create is going to use the contract table limits right. configured through syscattle. So you have like potentially a million. Uh, entries, or it could be whatever the user happens to configure. Um, I think a million is like roughly the, the default today. Um, so then the question is basically, does the CT create, you know, action? Does that when you run that in hardware, does that, um, you know, does that do you guarantee you have a million, you know, entries available, or do you somehow establish a fallback path so that the CT action so when you can't create okay. it falls back? So first, we support millions of rules. I, for Mellanox uh, hardware, that's not the problem. But of course, we do have a software fail block, a fail, fail, uh, fail, 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 um, fallback. Sorry, fallback. Because also the scene packet using the same, same rules. The scene packet is also going up, going, uh, going to the hardware. You have a fail in the connection checking. There are no match in the hardware. The packet is going to the software. The software is going through the TC, and the TC is sending it to the connection tracking. So again, if you don't have a match in the hardware because of this is a connection that is not established yet, this is a connection that um, you, uh, you don't have en enough space in the hardware to, to maintain the list, so this will go to the slow path. Yeah. The important aspect of this is that with the model that uh, Pablo described in the previous uh, session is that the creation actually always occurs in software and then gets pushed to the hardware. Uh, so if there's resource contention, which is a valid concern, uh, presumably the push would fail, yeah. and it would just always use software. Is there any other company, probably Netronum, want to yeah, well, uh, yeah. So I'm from Netronome. Perfect. Participate and in the API. I think Pablo, of course. Yeah. So be, uh, sorry for being a bit quiet. I have actually seen this material before. Uh, this is, if I had designed it, it's very similar to what I would have designed. I, I think it works well. I see the main uh, contention from it being in in just the topic that we were talking about just now that the c connection setup, the fact that the the sin needs to go to software. But I think you've thought that through, and probably it's going to be workable. Uh, yeah, otherwise, I mean, there's significant implementation details with tying to get these things together, but I'm sure we can work through it. Turn it off. So, uh, Pablo's clear, I wasn't in your lecture because there's some resource contention here on double track. But, uh, uh, Pablo, you hear me? So, you, people here mentioned NDOs for offloading that you talked about. Uh, just a general comment that I think today uh, most, most more common in, in the stack is to offload by notifications, right? Um, like, if you want to do something, because sometimes you have like, you have virtual devices like VLAN, VXLAN, bonding and the way. So notifications is easier way to get to hardware driver than to propagate NDOs. Just think about that. You, you see what I mean? That you send, you would, you would create a co connection tracking context and you can send notification. I created that. And if someone wants to offload that, they get a notification and they act. You don't have to call them directly. That's just a comment. Consider it. Okay, that's an implementation detail anyway, but yes, yes. I mean, so far, um, it's NDO based. Okay, so any other vendor through Netronum that's want to collaborate on that? 
in, in terms okay. of income. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we're interested. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> everyone. <Yeah. laughs> okay. So, meet, you, meet you at the mailing list. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, any yeah. other question? Uh, I was just going to say, um, it might be kind of, uh, you're probably already looking at this, but the, um, the OVS fields manual in terms of the kinds of um, different features that OVS uses from contract uh, would be, a, is a, the man pages there would be really useful for considering the potential future of, of this API, including things like, you know, I mean, ALG was raised before, but, but that was also raised this morning during um, uh, Harold's uh, sort of archaeology of NetFilter and, and the question of whether ALG should exist in kernel or in the hardware is sort of another um, big question. Uh, and then and then that sort of relates to things like there's um, uh, OVS provides this ability to uh, from a related packet fetch the original connection that is that uh, uh, like the original FTP connection that established this connection um, mm -hmm. f fetch the five tuple of that. Um, yeah. So based on what Simon was saying, though, it sounds like there's still going to be a software copy of all of these flows. So doing things like reversing, I guess it would be helpful from a, just a um, API perspective, but it doesn't sound like the hardware interface needs to support that. Yeah, I think in general, Pablo's design, the idea is that anything that's not in hardware can still be done in software. And so that we can progressively push more and more features or not push more and more features into the hardware. Yeah, as, as you asked, related to related, I don't think that's FTP parsing we, we want to do currently in the hardware. So probably we'll handle them to the software and then only the, the traffic itself you want to do the hardware offload. Right, but for instance, in the way that OVS, you might want to use it is for that offloaded um, data traffic, you want to do some policy match based on the control traffic that established this data connect traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, in which case, you would have to have that somehow represented in your um, in your in your actual okay. hardware offload. So just, just to describe the use case um, that, that Joe was talking about, so like you have the control channel, which is establishing the data channels, and if you have an up, a policy update to the control channel, then you want to um, drop the, you know, like for example, it was allowed, and then you want to change it to deny, you want to kill all of the data channels as well, mm -hmm. is the particular use case that, where you'd want to then do that, you know, so, look up based so on the control doing, channel. So what you're doing, you go into the connection tracking and do a, kind of a flash or something like that? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so, so the way that uh, this would be done with the, the OVS uh, stuff today is even for the data traffic, the match is actually based on the control traffic's five tuple. Okay. So when you run through the connection tracking for the data traffic, uh, it looks up the connection tracking entry, it finds that it was related, it, it, goes, it follows the pointer back to the original connection, and then gets the five tuple of that, and then it, makes, it takes that uh, you know, FTP control traffic's five tuple and, and uh, does the uh, the policy lookup based on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will look on the. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am um, in an environment of a cluster of two physical boxes, for example. The contract connections, uh, I assume they will be synchronized between the kernel. Right. Uh, and, uh, and so the, those entries in the hardware will be also synced uh, in real time. Yes, so, yeah. Okay, so if a connection is broken, and one member goes down and the connection goes to the other member, those uh, entries are already in there in the hardware and ready to, ready to rock. Yes, if the hardware is using the same table, yes. So if it's, yeah. Thanks. But what environment are you talking about? Like you have a link congregation or what? A cluster for redundancy, two, 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 two different boxes ready yeah. to, to yeah. deal with connections. So the question is if those two tables are the, the same hardware. Because if it's two different hardware, so of course you can sync them. But the, the question is if both of them support offload for the connection yeah, yeah. tracking. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, assume, assuming they're both the same, using the same Melnox uh, cards, for example. Yeah, okay. So uh, it, I think it's much easier to support it if we're talking about the same chip. So that's we can use a single table because um, if not, it also can be possible to offload. So that's what I think uh, Or mentioned. That's, you don't want to go to a specific net device. You want to, to submit an event and then both of the cards that know that mm. to support it will add this entry. The entry won't be aged because one of them is hitting the traffic and update the, the connection tracking. So that's the reason we will not age this uh, entry. Thanks. Okay, any more questions? What about aging? I'm just trying to understand better your solution because connection tracking is a timer related. It's, uh, yeah, it's so gone after some time. Yeah, so the, as I mentioned before, we want to update for, through polling for each connection the state and what is current status in the hardware so that you can do the aging. The aging in the established connection, if I remember correctly, they default in three days. So we have. It, it depends on the stage of yes. the uh, uh, connection tracking and for million uh, connection, it could be very painful uh, procedure uh, yes. to update. So we, we're facing this uh, problem also currently today with when we try to, d when we're doing open this switch offload, we also maintain millions rule and what we are doing, that's the reason I'm talking about that I don't want that it will be event. I want it to be a batch that you can grab in polling a lot of connection uh, each time, so you can do a polling for each few seconds of one million. So because if it will be event, one million events, we won't, we can't handle it. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is cutting into beer time. So let's thank uh, Ronnie. Give him. Thank you. Thank you.